The Art and Technology Lab at LACMA has already supported 15 artists. Recently, we followed two of those artists to Yosemite National Park as they 3D scanned the landscape. It's an exciting evolution in the history of photography. We're always looking to pit our technology against something tricky, and this landscape is incredibly tricky for us. But also we see our technology as an evolution of the camera and Yosemite has existed as an important place in photography's development throughout the years. The first people that we're aware of taking amazing photographs in, in the park are, are people like Weed and Watkins. And then one of our heroes, Edward Mybridge, started to play in Yosemite very early on in the 1870s. And then iconically Ansel Adams has, has for us anyway, completely imaged Yosemite. Yosemite provides for us a couple of nemesis scenarios. It's absolutely enormous, you know, it's, it's 10, 15 times the scale of anything we've ever come across before. So we're dealing with vast, vast distances. Um, and creatively, that's incredible for us because these tools are operating right at their edge. When a tool is working right at its edge, that's when you start to get these kind of mistakes and, and these, um, these kind of discoveries happening. So we're really, really fascinated in that. And the other big nemesis in Yosemite is the waterfalls. We're here at the most kind of powerful time of the year for the waterfalls. So we've got water, which is already a tricky subject for a laser scanner, but it's flying off the edge of a cliff and vaporizing and, and flying straight towards the, the scanner. So it's a massive challenge, um, it's a massive risk, and that's super exciting for us. You know, We don't aim to scan things where we know what the result is gonna be. We want to scan and be surprised by what the machine reveals to us and, and by what we're able to do with it. We have no instant feedback from the scanner. We can't see on, this, on the computer or on the screen of the scanner what the data has looked like. We have to go by a bit of gut instinct and a bit of kind of understanding of what will work and what will cause shadowing and what will be seen and what won't be. So we've probably got you know, a month or two of processing before we can actually see the kind of data and the kind of views that we're really after. So now that we're back at LACMA, we've, um, we've brought our expedition vehicle here with us. But the vehicle has kind of switched roles. So in the park, it was kind of this safe hub for us. It was like our digital base camp. And we've actually flipped it on its head now and it has become the venue for our artwork. So rather than being vehicle in landscape, we've got landscape in vehicle. We've stripped the interior of the vehicle out and we've inserted the Yosemite Valley back inside that, that vehicle. So what we have inside the vehicle is a, is, a, is a replica, a digital replica of, that, of the entire valley. And it's there as a beautiful hologram to see. And the viewports on the outside of the car are portals into that valley. So you can come and look at that valley from each angle. And the third of the fourth of those views is a zoom. So you can get that like shot straight into the center of Vernal Falls. We see this as a landscape that's completely saturated in images. It's, it's in, in no way pristine, remote or, or wilderness in terms of images anymore. It's like the kind of democratisation of photography. It went from something that was very specialist, expensive and difficult to something that now is with everyone and everyone can do photography. And what we're trying to make a parallel between here is that scanning is still in its infancy. We though expect, as with most things, it to get smaller, cheaper, faster and easier. 
imagining a future where we all have scanners on our phones and what the might be the implication of everyone having a scanner on their phone.